my name is Anwar Bilgonti, and today I'm going to present my PhD research about the EEG investigation of uh, some transactions for the automotive industry. In particular, uh, the expansion of transactions uh, because uh, with uh, the automotive Europe, we want to investigate the possibility to uh, gather information for designing uh, artificial sounds uh, for uh, improving uh, the, the safety of the drivers and uh, of the pedestrians outside. Mainly the motivation is the fact that uh, accidents, in most of the cases, happen due to the fact that uh, people don't pay attention to the, the road itself. And so uh, the idea is that we want to design uh, long sounds able to provide the, the maximum amount of information. And to do so, we can include uh, the, the spatial information because we are able to provide uh, uh, additional information in the same amount of time and informing the, the recipient, either the driver or the, uh, the pedestrian, about the danger, so about the direction of the, of the danger. For, uh, getting a quicker response and most probably also a, a more, uh, more appropriate one. But to design this kind of artificial sounds, we need uh, uh, data-driven approaches that are able to, uh, uh, to work with uh, uh, objective criteria. We can no longer use uh, the usual jury tests that are used in, uh, in the automotive industry because they are not only time consuming, but also they are quite subjective. It, they depend very much on the, uh, the population uh, and their investigation because everybody can have different tastes and uh, interception of different characteristics of the sound. Uh, and not only there are differences among people, but there are differences even within a, sem a single person, because from, from day to day, uh, it's possible that uh, I change my mind due to the context of the experiences that I live. So the idea is to leverage uh, objective physiological measurements like uh, brain signals or heart rate signals uh, to extract uh, meaningful information to, to be able to objectify <coughs> the, the Perception and in particular the spatial perception in this case. Then the topic uh, seemed relevant because there's a lot, a lot of research on uh, the physiological and anatomical characterization of uh, acoustic perception within the brain, but there are very few studies addressing the actual usage of these signals uh, and the actual uh, discrimination between directions or uh, other uh, special characteristics. Uh, through the analysis of brain signals, and in particular in the single trial session. in a single trial fashion, so the single response for a unique event, because the, these brain signals are very noisy and the information uh, uh, is confounded by, by other processes going on and by noise uh, due to motion and this kind of thing. And that's why uh, there are very few studies doing this. Uh, therefore, the idea is to combine the need from the automotive industry and the possibility of a novel uh, application of EEGs. And the question were, are we able to discriminate between different directions of the, of the sound from uh, EEGs only and by doing uh, it in a single trial fashion? And if it's possible, are we able to do it in a, in a general way? So by adding a general mo unique model uh, able to identify a single uh, invariant pattern within a population, because that's what we would use uh, in, uh, in the review. So the idea is that everything is based on uh, previous uh, literature. And the, as I said, there was a lot of uh, characterization of the human acoustic perception. Uh, in particular, there is this uh, theory called dual pathways that basically consists in the fact that uh, the acoustic processing subdivides in two streams, one uh, a bottom one that characterizes the content of the, of the sound. So we are able to recognize the sound. 
And the second one is uh, the top one, uh, the dorsal, which is more involved in characterizing the spatial information. Not only the direction, but also the speed uh, and many other characteristics. And basically, the information flows through these two, uh, two parts, uh, building up the, the, the information and the, the actual transaction. As we can see in the right hand side picture, uh, there are many studies. Each, each dot is a different study. Uh, and uh, the legend is hidden down there, but basically the, the blue ones are the spatial uh, studies and the red ones are the, um, the what, so the content uh, related uh, studies. And we can see that there are regions that are mainly involved in either of the two, but also there are other regions uh, where the, the processing is shared uh, among the two. So the first thing I did later on, uh, build on, uh, on this, uh, this knowledge. And I wanted to actually confirm whether this, uh, this model is, uh, is valid and if I could backtrack uh, my result to this. The idea to use EEGs for this kind of, uh, of analysis uh, uh, came from, from Toyota itself because they wanted to use a system uh, able to be used in the real world for designing and evaluating uh, the possible artificial sound. And in particular, is the only technique providing, which is not invasive, and it, it is able to provide an high resolution of measurement. So we are able to collect a snapshot of the brain processing from the electrical measurement uh, around the scalp uh, with uh, many different electrodes, and to characterize the overall processing, not only in a specific sites, but uh, everywhere. And this allows us to evaluate the, the two screens that I, that I talked about. The point of high resolution, high depth of high resolution is important because we would like to compare the brake signals uh, and, the uh, and the analysis done on brake signals compared of finding correlations with external measurements like, for instance, the, the steering wheel angle or the braking uh, pedal uh, pressure to be able to kind of uh, uh, find a correlation between the, res the acoustic uh, response with the actual behaviors of the, of the driver, for instance. So that being said, uh, I designed uh, uh, the main experiment of my, of my research uh, was about sound localization. And it started with a pilot study with very few participants uh, to confirm the feasibility. But then uh, after we confirmed it, we designed the, the full one, consisting in uh, people listening in a listening room uh, with, um, uh, with normal, normal speakers, a, a, a very high-end uh, and high-quality system. They were listening to uh, sounds played randomly from, from four directions. And in the meantime, uh, I was measuring the brain signals uh, to be able to, to uh, to analyze the, the corresponding responses. All this uh, fully passively, so no active localization was involved because again, we wanted to simulate the real usage uh, in, uh, in real life, so uh, there is no people waiting for a specific sound. And in this case, the sound that were used were in, uh, bursts of uh, four impulses, uh, processed with uh, very complex uh, special, uh, sound specialization techniques, uh, uh, allowing to simulate uh, um, also a, a third dimension, uh, third spatial dimension, which is the, uh, the motion, the radial motion. Uh, so the sounds were simulating either approaching or receiving sounds. And in this case, uh, uh, 30 people were involved in, uh, in, this, uh, in this analysis, which is quite a, a decent number for this kind of uh, EEG investigation. Now, the main results uh, of uh, this acquisition campaign are uh, um, physiological. So I will present now three main uh, results uh, that uh, come from the physiological investigation, and then I will jump to the actual usage of the signals for the specification. Uh, in this case, I want to I wanted to confirm from previous studies that uh, the co there is a contralaterality of the left versus right uh, uh, processing. And with contralaterality, I mean that the amplitude of the brain signals in one region is higher when the sound arrives from the opposite direction. And here, what I want to show is the spatial temporal evolution of the, uh, of the brain, uh, the brain uh, responses 
In particular, each block represents the difference between the, the responses, overall the, the scalp, for sounds coming from the left and sounds coming from the right. And when we see strong colors or the axis, where, uh, which mean, it means that there is a statistically significant difference. So there is where the processing at that time and at that point, the there is a different processing going on. And in particular, I, I, I can show uh, in, the, in the figure below that this uh, collateral pattern uh, is uh, actually actually there because we see that there is this statistically significant uh, difference in, uh, for instance, the left uh, left uh, cells of T7 on the left, uh, where the signal uh, has a negative fluctuation with the highest amplitude with a red signal, which is related to the right. Uh, which is exactly the opposite on the other side. So channel T8 on the right hand side uh, exhibits um, a negative peak with highest amplitude in the blue signal, which comes from the left. So they are both. And this is uh, uh, already a confirmation, and we can see that there is a pattern, a discriminable pattern in the way signal that we can leverage to, to classify the two, the two sounds. Then the same uh, reasoning happens for the uh, eccentricity pattern, which is uh, another uh, pattern that was, I, I discovered in another article, but a very limited one, and which was not even uh, levels to, to do a classification. But nevertheless, uh, here we can see that the, the temporal, spatial temporal evolution shows a much larger uh, regions where there is a strong difference when uh, we process uh, within the brain sounds <coughs> that come from uh, the central directions, frontal or rear, uh, compared to the processing uh, of sounds that come from lateral directions, so left and right. We can see it from the spatial temporal on the left, but we can see it even more on the real EEG signal, which is the electrical measurement in one specific channel, which is in the center. There we can see uh, in the, in the uh, green regions, uh, which I like the statistically significant uh, regions, uh, where uh, there is the difference uh, in the processing between the two conditions. And in this case, it's the strongest uh, of all the configurations that uh, I evaluated. Finally, uh, this is no more confirmation, but this uh, uh, is uh, a new result uh, that was not discovered uh, before. Uh, is uh, uh, a, a, pro a process of habituation uh, related to this eccentricity pattern. And in particular, uh, during the experiment, uh, I, uh, during the data analysis, I divided the data set in two mutually exclusive data sets. One considering sounds that were preceded by sounds coming from a different direction, and the other sounds that were preceded by the same uh, direction, so behaving uh, in a in a habituation uh, situation. So compare a situation uh, where there could be habituation due to the fact that the sounds were coming uh, from the same direction compared to, to the other uh, the other condition, we can see that there are directions where there is no difference, in particular the centric ones, uh, front and rear. There are no statistically significant regions, there are no crosses, nothing. Uh, it's scattered. Whereas we have uh, highlighted in, uh, in pink the fact that there are statistically significant regions uh, in the left and right. And this means that uh, there is an habituation effect uh, only in uh, lateral sounds. Then, how we can leverage this uh, is uh, it's a matter of investigation, but still, it's something that was not discovered before, and uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to see, especially because it, this analysis came from the fact that we couldn't identify um, differences uh, between uh, between different uh, directions in the latter part uh, of, uh, of the brain responses, and therefore we wanted to investigate uh, habituation and if it will discover this, uh, this pattern. Then, as I said, uh, the, the ultimate goal was the actual classification of the directions. So we, we use the single brain responses to, uh, to, to use machine learning and to classify them uh, in the different directions, applying uh, different methods by, from the classical neuroscientific ones uh, by feature extraction plus uh, classifiers uh, to more complex ones uh, with deep learning and some geometric approaches. 
and we found that all uh, uh, all configuration showed uh, performances above 100 cents, even though many most of them were only slightly above. But the most important uh, result is uh, the performance in the eccentricity uh, pattern, especially and uh, related to the generalization. Because in this case, we were able to uh, identify a unique model for all the participants um, by using the Riemannian geometry approach. And so we were able to kind of uh, match the performance of uh, individual models that are much easier to, to train because they see only a single person with uh, its, phys its physiognomy uh, and, uh, and therefore uh, usually the performances are, are higher. So the, the generalization result here is, uh, is relevant in, uh, in our opinion. And with this I conclude because basically uh, the main finding uh, is not the performance uh, in classification. Unfortunately, we, we hope to find something usable in real life, but we are actually still far from it. Nevertheless, there are these three patterns that are, uh, that are confirmed and that might, that might be used in, uh, in other contexts. Uh, depending on the user. In particular, the arbitration one uh, is, uh, is very is very relevant uh, because it's, even it will, it will be interesting to evaluate even further to, to see the, the arbitration uh, in, the, in, the lateral, uh, in the lateral in the lateral sound. The, the fact that single trial uh, and population-wide classification and accuracy were, uh, were achieved both in left and right and uh, eccentricity configuration is, uh, is uh, one of the main, uh, the main results and especially because it's, uh, it's statistically relevant compared to the to random, random baseline. And uh, I didn't say it before, but uh, unfortunately, uh, actually I've shown it uh, that we weren't able to, to find uh, interesting results uh, or actually to classify sounds in the corner of confusion, so one versus real. Uh, we hope to do that, uh, but uh, the, the signals are more or less the same. And uh, also, uh, we designed the experiment to investigate also uh, radial uh, sound motion, approaching versus receiving sound, to be able to evaluate uh, at the end of the response whether there were differences uh, in the brain signals, but we weren't able to find uh, any pattern. And that's also why we investigated the, the application. So, with this, I conclude, and thank you very much for the attention. And I would also like to thank my, my mentors, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Grazie. Sono domande da parte della Commissione. Can you speak in English or? Italian. As you wish. Non erano troppo pochi i dati che ha ottenuto sul campo per aggiustare quel tipo di modello? Allora, inizialmente la, uh, lo studio ha previsto uno studio pilota con effettivamente pochi, pochi dati, uh, però dopo nell'analisi effettiva, quella dell'esperimento, le persone sono venute non solo una volta, ma sono venute in due giorni e sono riuscito ad acquisire 128 singole risposte per ogni direzione, per ogni configurazione, quindi avvicinamento allontanamento. Ovviamente non è, non è il solito machine learning o deep learning, ma comunque è, è qualcosa di, di decente. Il risultato principale appunto è quello dovuto alla, alla generalizzazione, è quello dove mi sono impegnato di più proprio per uh, superare questo problema. Unendo i dati di tutti i soggetti si poteva lavorare su un, su un dataset unico un pelo più, più adatto in termini di numeri. La significatività statistica su cosa era basata? Era un, no, no. Era un semplice t-test sì, con, sì. con una correzione di Monferroni perché ogni istante temporale veniva, uh, era un singolo, una singola analisi quindi dovevamo okay. per forza correggere. Anche nel, nelle immagini che facevo vedere da sopra lì erano tante analisi di una sopra l'altra quindi <coughs> un wax t-test con molto con 5% di alfa. Grazie. 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 Grazie.
altre domande? Io le chiedevo appunto le ricadute a breve termine dei risultati della sua ricerca, quali potrebbero essere? Sinceramente, allora, l'unico risultato che può aver senso usare velocemente è quello della centricità, appunto, quindi mi piacerebbe proseguire con, con Toyota e valutare su, in macchina effettivamente uh, se rimane uh, costante questo, questo pattern, quindi se effettivamente si può riuscire a discriminare un, un suono di avviso che proviene da, dritto, da davanti o da dietro rispetto a qualcosa che viene da, da destra a sinistra. Dati i risultati, questa è l'unica cosa a breve che, che penso possa essere utilizzabile. Per quanto riguarda la parte di habituation, è molto interessante, ma più dall'aspetto psicofisiologico che di realizzabilità. Quindi non, non credo che utilizzabile anche guardando la mole di dati che ho acquisito e il tempo che ho richiesto anche pensare di fare nuovi, nuovi studi accumulando più dati per magari migliorare le performance non so se, se ne valga veramente la pena però potrebbe, potrebbe comunque essere interessante quindi potrebbe essere insomma applicabile mettendo un sistema di sì. avviso all'interno esatto spaziale non solo l'idea era proprio quella di avere un l'arco per esempio a sinistra del guidatore informarlo della direzione del suono. In questo caso sarebbe possibile probabilmente fare qualcosa solo estremo a sinistra, contro, contro dietro, contro davanti e, e vedere se si riescono a matchare le, le performance. Perché una parte che non ho presentato è tutta l'infrastruttura che è stata implementata per acquisire e quella sarebbe pronta appunto per, per fare questo tipo di prove che è stata usata in tempo reale durante la guida. Quindi sì, ovviamente dopo il dottorato bisogna vedere. Ci può essere visto poi una cosa di una distrazione del guidatore poi con tutte queste informazioni? Mm, bah, nel momento in cui si usa un suono di avviso è proprio un momento critico. Il, lo use case principale è la macchina guida autonoma, la persona non sta prestando attenzione, quindi in quel caso qualsiasi informazione è ben, Bene, è il momento di criticità sì, è un estremo, che... durante la guida sì, non è proprio un suono continuo di avviso che effettivamente potrebbe portare a distrarre il, il guidatore grazie mille grazie